My name is Jared Meyer, and I work for Administrator in our Denver office. We have a very special event for you today with Helder Leboy of QuantSpark. I just want to mention that it's important to understand there are substantial risks in trading commodities, futures, contracts, and forex. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you, and that will depend on your specific, excuse me, specific circumstances and financial resources. It is possible to lose all the funds deposited with your broker. You could even incur losses beyond the needed amounts. Please inquire at NintraderEcosystem.com forward slash risk hyphen disclosure for more information or for a copy of the CFTC forward disclosure. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not a solicitation or recommendation, but simply educational in nature. All right. And some more information, this presentation is presented by Nintra LLC. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the Nintrader trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the Nintrader brokerage directly at area code 312-262-1289 or by emailing brokerage sales at nintrader.com. So we are very excited for this unique event in which Helder demonstrates how to follow order flow dynamics using the Superdome series. Thanks again for your attendance today. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the Nintrader webinar room, Elder Leeboy. Please take it away, Elder. Uh, thank you, Jared. Um, let's start off then. Um, hello, my name is Heller Leboy, uh, and here are some disclaimers. I'd like to add um, that all opinions expressed uh, are my own, and nothing in this webinar should be construed uh, as a trade recommendation. Um, I would also like some, to add some personal disclaimer. Uh, this is my first presentation. And I think it's the first presentation for the Superdome as well. And my wife says, I talk a lot. So let's see how uh, that goes. So firstly, I want to thank everybody that made possible our uh, participation. Uh, we wish that all the participants enjoy the webinar. And I also hope that it will be interesting to all. I'll be taking questions at the end of this educational presentation about the Superdome series. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to present the Superdom series and hopefully uh, you'll see the benefit in incorporating it in your uh, trading methodology. Uh, I would also like to say that English is not my mother tongue, so excuse me for uh, any mistakes. I'll try to do the best I can to convey the message in a clear way. So a little bit about Quantspark technology. So Quantspark Technology is a Portuguese uh, startup we established in 2017 in Lisbon. Uh, Portugal is a small country uh, but with a rich history. And although we are small and live in the same peninsula, we are not uh, Spain. And in contrast, uh, we Quantspark have been with NinjaTrader uh, since uh, May this year, roughly six months, uh, contrasting with the fact that Portugal has been established as a country in the year 1,143, so almost 900 years ago. Um, we have two distinct uh, business areas, a consultation services and custom ninja script project, and we also develop our own ready-made add-ons to expand your ninja trader. Today, we will focus on a very uh, original add-on, uh, for one of the coolest uh, innovations in Indutrader 8, which is the uh, ability to create your own Superdome column. And firstly, I want to guide you uh, through all that we've been, we'll be uh, talking in this uh, presentation. So, uh, we'll start by identifying why you could use the Superdome, even if it's in conjunction with a chart. Um, we'll skim through the Superdome series for a short moment. I think it's a good way to see the forest before uh, seeing the trees. Um, we start by looking at the volume pro column and define what is the volume point of control and then value area. We'll look at the volume clusters and how we could trade them. We will also uh, see what's the difference between linear volume delta and diagonal volume delta. And with the aid of filters, we'll see where the large participants uh, are trading. We will then see uh, about order book imbalance and how uh, to export alerts to Excel, which is pretty, pretty cool. 
We will be looking at the trades column and how we can see the interaction between buyers and sellers. And finally, we'll see the uh, time and sales column, uh, which, is, uh, and which is still important in the modern age. And we'll also understand why we still need to reconstruct the tape even after the uh, MDP 3.0 protocol. And right at the end, we'll be giving out a discount uh, coupon code on our um, add-on. And uh, so stick around till the end. So why use the Superdome? Well, uh, first, the Superdome natively uh, displays level 2 if your data package uh, has it. Um, it's also easy to manage trades with uh, very few clicks. Uh, the DOM, uh, the DOM is the now. It's what's happening now in the market. So it lets you focus on the current market action. In conjunction with a Super DOM series, it's easy to perform order flow and order book analysis. And it can be equally visual as a chart, as you will see. So since NinjaTrader 8 was released, we looked uh, at the opportunities that the new Super DOM presented and we started to develop the Superdom series. So this is the Superdom series for uh, people who don't know. This is version 2 which was released also um, this week and we currently offer four columns or building blocks that allow you to create your own highly personalized Superdom. In this image we have uh, we have a depth column. We can see uh, the depth column in single updates mode, a normal depth column, and a depth column with only four depth levels. We then have the trades column to display the current market action. We have a sell and a buy column. Then we have the volume pro column that's displaying various uh, volume profiles, a total, a percentage, a sell, a buy volume, a diagonal delta and a custom volume profile which was reset and finally we have the time and sales displaying the reconstructed tape and one displaying trades above 20 lots these uh, flexible uh, columns enable you to, be, to view different components of the market and ultimately uh, enhance your decision making process when you're trading so we'll begin with the volume pro column and what is the volume point of control. So what is the volume point of control? Simply put, the volume point of control is the price at which most of the volume traded. It's the price that was most agreed to trade. In this case, we're looking at the developing volume point of control because the session isn't over yet and the point can still shift. The volume point of control answers one simple question. Where is most volume during the session been traded? Or another simple question in auction terms. What is the fairest price, the most accepted price? Uh, in Volume Pro, you have the ability uh, to expand this concept and apply it only for sellers, only for buyers, for large volume trades, for uh, large buy trades and, and so on. Now, what is the volume value area? The volume value area is where 68.2% of the volume traded is present. Why 68.2%? Because 68.2% is the percentage that constitutes the first standard deviation in a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution. While standard deviation by itself asks the question, how is the data distributed along the mean? Uh, with value area, it's a little bit different. Instead, the mean, uh, the sorry, instead of the mean, uh, the value area uh, uses the mode. So it's using the VPOC. So for the value area, asks the question, how is the data distributed along the mode? And why is it important that market participants often look uh, at these two levels, meaning the volume value, value area high and the volume value area low? Um, 
as points of uh, support and resistance. And on the image, you can see those various uh, types of profiles, of volume profiles, displaying there each individual uh, VPOC and value area. So uh, this means that different uh, participants, different activity, will display different value areas and VPOCs. So let's jump into uh, volume nodes. So a volume node or a cluster is a volume profile concept. And it's divided in uh, basically two groups, a high volume node and a low volume node. A high volume node is where one or a small ranges of prices uh, attracted volume. In a high volume node, prices are perceived as fair to both buyers and sellers, and a, a lot of business is conducting in those small ranges. They, normally, they are normally seen in areas of uh, consolidation. It's a, it's a balance area, and price tends to move slowly when inside a, a high volume node. But if price comes back to revisit the high volume node, there is more than often a reaction and they will act as support and resistance. So a low volume node, on the other hand, is areas where almost no volume is traded and they can come in two particular behaviors. First, high volatility where, is where you see very little volume in a wide price range. This shows you that the movement was quick and it didn't allow for much interaction between buyers and sellers. Or secondly, the result of a breakout or a bounce. So when prices were immediately rejected. In a low uh, volume node, prices are perceived as unfair and it's expected that there is a low volume node between two high volume nodes that the low volume node will be traded back and forth as the market seeks balance, filling the volume between those two high volume nodes. So what would a typical setup look like? Uh, a typical setup using the volume nodes is, is to look at them as, as possible uh, future support and resistance zones. Uh, you could be looking at some price reaction when hitting those zones. So, for example, if price were to come down between those two high volume nodes, we could expect to see a bounce up from the lower high volume area. If price doesn't react quickly to that blue area, for example, then price will tend to slow down to a muddy grind, as that area that we revisited still brings participants to engage in business. This is what is called um, horizontal development. Market is uh, accepting uh, a price as mostly fair and is willing to continue to do business there. If you don't see any bounce in price or a rejection in price, then as it enters the acceptance zone, it might grind for some time. Uh, and the idea of volume uh, nodes is that markets move from balance to imbalance, right? They're seeking value and seeking balance. But once they find it, they need to move away as well. So right now, let's take a look at the volume uh, deltas. I hope that was uh, clear. So in volume at price, we have the volume delta that lets us compare the buys and the sells at each price. We'll be looking at linear delta and diagonal delta. Linear delta places weight in the price level. Thus, the buyer's traded uh, volume is compared to the same price with the seller's volume. We subtract the seller's volume to the buyer's volume for each price. Uh, this would uh, provide an indication of um, order flow at the particular price. This is quite straightforward, but nevertheless, I would like to make a distinction uh, on the delta that we're seeing. This is a volume at price delta, not order flow uh, delta. Order flow delta is what you could see on a chart uh, with, um, with order flow commutative delta. 
that is part of the order flow plus plus suite uh, of NinjaTrader 8, for example. And there you would see the order flow delta. So now diagonal delta is more of an auction-based delta. So if the market is uh, in a dual auction, then there isn't only one price, right? There are two prices. And there are interactions between market participants. So the diagonal delta allows you to see this interaction. The diagonal delta puts weight not on the, on the price, but on the interaction. It compares the bid traded volume of one price to the ask traded volume of the price located directly above. So it compares the sell and the buys. We calculate it uh, the same way as a linear delta. Uh, we subtract the, the buy volume. Uh, we subtract from the buy volume, sorry, the sell volume, but diagonally. So um, now <laughs> let's take a look at the, where we can find large market uh, participants. Let's see. Okay, okay, let's proceed. Uh, now that we looked at the differences between the sellers and the buyers, uh, we can dig uh, a little bit deeper and look for big participants and where they trade and consequently uh, glance at their behavior. Um, so let's ask the question, where are big lots uh, being traded? What are the price levels that attract uh, big lot participants? Uh, here we can see uh, two volume uh, pro columns and we applied a, a filter of 10 or more. And as we can see, um, at the high uh, of that profile, we see the sells. So those 301 sold at the high uh, comes from traders who use more than 10 lots. So that's a very, it's a very simple calculation, but at the same time provides a very useful information to where are the traders that, for example, in this case, uh, trade with 10 lots or more. And you can clearly see that the profile uh, displays much more activity on the sell side. So, um, and here, uh, on another example, uh, we have uh, filters but we applied an algorithm to reconstruct the smaller trades into bigger orders. And that's something new on version 2. So what we're doing here on those two other profiles that you see at your uh, right uh, is that we're filtering by size. Um, we'll f I'm sorry. We're filtering smaller orders. Well, filtering by size uh, without reconstruction, we can, spot, we can spot straight up size being used, but in a reconstructed profile, we can see the aggregation of smaller trades that were bigger before the order submission. Uh, and we'll discuss a little bit of this uh, a little bit forward. Also, by having multiple columns, we can glance at some filtered columns just to gauge the participation of large traders with very, very minimal work, letting you focus on what's going on in the now instead of trying to remember where a big lot traded or what was the price of a big lot. With this profile, it's very easy to determine where the big lots traded. And it can be on your super dom, uh, squished, just to give you that information. But we also need to take a look at uh, what are the intentions of the market participants. And this can be seen in another building block uh, of the super dom series, which is the depth column. So, um, Market depth, or the order book, or also known as level 2 data, are names used to define what is essentially information about the intentions to trade and the available liquidity. As you can see in the image, there are various uh, components to the depth uh, column. We have ask side limit orders, often called uh, offers. We then see the bid side limit order. This is where the buyers show their intentions. We can then look at some quick summary statistics and view the order book uh, in balance in real time, for example. 
in the summary um, section down there, let me, let me get that. So right there, as you can see, um, we have a lot of useful information to gauge liquidity. We have delta, we have total bids and asks, average bid size, average ask side for that particular column. So as you filter or change parameters, that summary will also change with it. And we can also see some of the uh, abilities of the Superdome series, as you can filter and also display only a certain number of levels. For example, the first column you see, it's only displaying three levels. So it kind of zooms in the action of those three levels right there, while you can still maintain a macro perspective of what is the whole depth. And I've, uh, I've grayed out a little bit of the supply and demand. Why? Because these are intentions. And although most of the lots are traded, they are still not a guarantee that they will be executed. So they are a little bit grayed out. But you could say that perhaps in one case, they could be supply and demand. Uh, so what is order book imbalance? So before I continue, I, I would like to propose a quick distinction about order book imbalance and order flow imbalance. Uh, often they are interchangeable, but uh, today we're talking about volume, and I think it's important for us to distinguish two very important things, intentions and behaviors. So the limit uh, order book imbalance regards the imbalance that occurs in the order book, thus the excess of submitted buy or sell orders to the exchange. On the other hand, order flow imbalance regards the executed orders that take place in the market. Order book imbalance uh, it's, it's very important as a descriptor that allows us to understand the general sentiment of the market. So we'll take a look at that. We have two ways of displaying uh, order book imbalance. Uh, the first we'll talk about is proportional imbalance. So this answers the question, uh, what is proportion of one side in relation to the other side? It's quite simple. Uh, this will show you, as the name implies, the proportion to which one side is proportional to the other. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the output of the imbalance is one as uh, absolute equilibrium, right? Uh, no overpowering, uh, proportions are the same, it's, it's, it's basically a tie, right? You have the same amount of sell as you have of buy. But when you reach a value of, for example, 2, this means that the limit order of one side is the double of the other side, and that's where we get the proportion. So we can say that there are twice as many sellers uh, as there are buyers, for example. It's fairly simple to interpret. Uh, and you, uh, as a user, can choose between this option or the next option we'll talk about, volume order imbalance. So the volume order imbalance is the theoretical way of calculating the order book. Uh, if, you, if you search up some, some literature on uh, order book imbalance, you will find uh, that they refer to volume order imbalance. This is also something new in version 2. Um, so it is defined, volume order imbalance is defined as the proportion of interest on the bid side. So the calculation, when it's done this way, the calculation then considers then the imbalance will range from 0 to 1. When it's 0, it, this is converted to an absolute ask side imbalance. This, in normal circumstances, cannot really happen because um, it, this means that there aren't any buyers in the market. And ultimately, it, it means that then there's no market. The same is true for the inverse situation where the value reaches 1. So at, at that point, you, you have absolute bid side dominium. And of course, no market. Okay. So besides the visual imbalance alert showed in like a light green, blue color at the left, so that little we can also use the option with by book. And although this is not a guarantee of imbalances, 
um, I think uh, it provides a, a nice visual to when a big order comes in. So, sorry, this option lets you arrange graphically the size of the order book according to the dominant max value seen. It's very useful to make the visual component relative and it makes the sides relative to each other. So, as you can see uh, on the third column, uh, we got width by book. And while the, uh, while the uh, ask side seems like uh, quite big on the second column, by using width by book, you can clearly see that those bids right there uh, really are different and really are big compared to the overall book. So that's what we wanted to show you. Also, uh, on the last column, you can see filters. So you can filter by an absolute value there. Moving on. Uh, so now we'll take a look at uh, exporting uh, depth events into Excel, which is one very uh, original feature of the depth column in conjunction with the alerts log. Uh, I think it's pretty cool from NinjaTrader 8. Uh, so it's the possibility to export all this information, all these depth events to Microsoft Excel. This is just an example to show you how you can further use the software in conjunction with NinjaTrader 8 and the SuperDOM series. So I'll show you uh, how quickly it is to export and create a log of significant uh, depth events for further analysis. I also want to say that you can use, uh, this is not strict to the SuperDOM series of course, uh, but you can, you can use the alerts log for any other alerts uh, from other add-ons. So in this example, we have opened an alerts log and have set some alerts in our depth column. And as those events start to happen, they will trigger the event, the alert, sorry. And with some customization of the alerts log, we can get some simple view uh, of the information we require by removing certain columns. In this example, uh, I'll, I'm just using the time and the message itself. After that, uh, we right-click on the top of the alerts log and we are presented with the context menu. We click to export and we are presented with the location where we want to save the exported file. Uh, NinjaTrader 8 will open uh, the exported file automatically once you save it. So once exported, uh, you can then uh, convert the exported data into columns by by going to the data tab in Excel and clicking on uh, text to columns. Um, and uh, this action will help us uh, separate all the elements uh, of the message. So after which is fairly easy to separate the alerts uh, created from the SuperDOM series and the depth events as we created an alert message uh, that we find highly compatible for exporting. Uh, we might optimize it. Uh, but in this case, we're using uh, the limited and click next. And in step, in, in step two, we use a space as the limiter. And right now, we can already start to see how that data will come along. And finally, uh, we have our output. And this be, can be quite useful if you're uh, wanting to create a diary or if you want to export this for further analysis using any other software, you can then create averages or charts. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, this also shows you how you can make a very useful use of the alerts log uh, window uh, in interacting with other uh, third-party software. I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, here is also another example of a percentage uh, update. Let me get that. So here, this is just one alert, and it's already constructed. So, so we, had this, uh, we have the side, the type of update, the action that triggered the update, the quantity that was removed, for example, in this case, um, which was a, a, this alert refers to a uh, percent of ask update. Then we have the previous quantity, the quantity that remain after the remove, the price at which it occurred, and the position of the depth of market on the ask side. So this is also an alert that the SuperDOM series uh, depth column can uh, export. So what I meant to say here is that the depth column ultimately can provide various untapped features 
and, and looks to provide new ways to analyze data uh, in the market debt behavior, which is something that um, I think is really useful. Moving on to trades column to see where the intentions uh, become behaviors. So the trades column. Um, it's, we got one column for the sell side and another one for the buy side. This means that the trade that occurs at the ask price, it's considered a buy. The buyer attacked the offer and consumed sell side liquidity and vice versa. A trade at the bid is considered a sell. The seller attacked or hit the bid and consumed buy side liquidity. We kind of already know this from the diagonal delta right? calculation. So the trades column provide filtering abilities and, and alerts. Uh, it also provides a functionality that enables the user to keep watching the accumulation as trades are executed between the best bid and the best ask, even if they quickly jump but, and come back to that same spread. So it, it, it's kind of easy to follow the action between uh, the battle between buyers and sellers. Um, and so now we can take a look on how this liquidity is consumed. So as we saw in, in, in the depth column, participants can remove orders and they can also add orders, right? Uh, and the trades column gives us something, uh, some insight into what uh, is really happening. Are we leaving uh, big trades and prices moving fast? So are we conquering some area of price? Or are we trading and seeing big volume, but the price doesn't, doesn't move? If the traded volume is high and the price doesn't move, we might be looking at the absorption uh, by the opposite side. This means that the opposite side is passively consuming liquidity, if you think about it, at a better price. So, for example, if buyers continually keep buying the ask price and are unable to tick up, this might uh, indicate that sellers are letting their orders execute at a better price. We also might be looking at an iceberg, for example, where pending orders are being refreshed at the rate of execution. But we should also think about this as a matter of the absorption can be in various levels. And this is one of the ideas that uh, QuantSpark is also following up on that. So now all the trades uh, that we see on the, on, the, on the trades column are also reflected and also registered in the time and sales column. So let's take a look at what we can see with the help of the time and sales. The time and sales is one of the earliest forms to analyze the market and the order flow. It's, um, very simple, yet very informative. Ultimately, the time and sales is, is, is a way um, that the exchange, uh, the market, fulfills its duty in disseminating information. And although it's simple, it's the origin uh, of all our charts and analysis. The time and sales is a, is a fundamental source of data. The time and sales or tape is where we can monitor the order flow. Uh, participants uh, that are in the market and the tempo at which it moves. So it indicates the balance or imbalance of forces if we see a lot of uh, in a mixed uh, tape, if we see a lot of greens, if we see a lot of reds. So that is indicating the balance or imbalance of forces between buyers and sellers. So also in the image you can see some of the basic functions of uh, filtering uh, either by size or by uh, side. Okay, um, so now uh, what we need to know, and we know this happens, um, is that split block pricing and order split occurs. So, so split block pricing, which can then lead to the common uh, weighted average price and VWAPs and TWAPs um, occurs. So what we're trying to do uh, by consolidating the tape, by reconstructing the tape, is that we're trying to match the income order flow and consolidate the smaller trades that were split 
into there and try to um, gauge the original size of the order. So by consolidating these smaller orders, we're trying to determine and track the original sizes and um, evaluate what kind of traders are participating. And that's why even uh, after MDP uh, uh, 3.0 protocol was implemented, that we still need to reconstruct the tape. So lastly, you then see now the forest again. Uh, so now that we've seen all the current, uh, not all, but fairly a big amount of the capabilities of the SuperDOM series, we can better integrate it in, in our trading, perhaps. The SuperDOM also lets you insert uh, compatible uh, SuperDOM indicators right on the price column. And those are normally indicators that have uh, price plots being outputted. Uh, for example, you might want to use the current uh, open uh, high-low. You might want to use the prior, prior open high-low close uh, to know where the levels are, for example, directly on your Superdome. And we also offer two extra products that are the limit order visualizer, uh, which enables you to, vi to view the past uh, depth behavior, so you can keep track of it. And with order flow speed, you can also gauge the, the trades historically. So that there are good companions uh, with each other. So um, and we're giving out, thanks everybody for staying, uh, we're giving out um, a coupon, sorry, with seven days validity uh, so that you are able to test accounting from today on all available add-ons. So how, how, how can you get this? Just, uh, just uh, insert webinar in the uh, coupon code and that's it. You get a 20% discount that will be applied on your order. Now I know we didn't talk much about limit order visualizer or order flow, but if you are interested in fast, well you can get it now. Um, it's easy as typing webinar in the code. So wrapping up. You can uh, feel free to reach us out in the email uh, exclusive for this webinar. So you can write up at the I saw your webinar at quantsparttechnology.com. And if you want to tell us something more, uh, you can go and fill out the form. If you have any ideas, comments, or you, you just if you just want to give some extra feedback of the webinar, you can also go to quantsparttechnology.com. I want to say something. So you can say whatever you want on that form. Um, I'll be taking questions about the SuperDOM series now uh, and if you have any other questions besides the uh, SuperDOM series you can also contact me freely via email or, or the website. So let's see. So Elder, uh, there are many questions uh, on the, in the question box in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I can read them yeah. to you if that's easier, uh, and then you can respond. Um, yeah. uh, Andre asks, what is the minimum screen size in inches required for, for dome columns? For dome columns? Oh, none. I mean, you can, you can use the... the the uh, the width is it the width? Sorry, I'm trying to find out the question. Or what is the minimum screen size or inches required for a? Uh, well, it, it depends on what you want to see. With SuperDome series, um, you can have multiple columns. You can put as many columns as you want. You can then um, how can I put this? You can then also customize. Uh, the font, make it smaller, bigger. It all depends on how you want to see. There's no uh, minimum screen size in, in inches. All right. Um, so and, and let me see. Maybe right. I can I can do something. I have some uh, examples. As live, I see uh, somebody um, asked if I had a video. Richard, uh, do I have a video of this? Oh, do I have a video of the Superdome being used live? 
good equalizing volume and order flow visualizer. Uh, limit order visualizer, perhaps? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, I had this for the end. Let me just set up the, the screen here just a moment. Drag it. Not sure if everybody can see the screen. If, uh, if yes, please type yes. Everybody can see my screen. It's a no. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so here's a here's a live example. Uh, and in regards to to you, you can you can do it. We're working. We are having a. We keep on working. Um, but you can set the width. I mean, you can set as many columns as you wish. I have here the um, all examples. So here you, you see a lot. Now this was meant to be viewed like that. But yeah, maybe this is an overkill. But this is to show you uh, what, what happened. This is to show you uh, that you can have uh, whatever number of columns that you wish. Weirdly enough, uh, my data. That's weird. Um, All right. Uh, anything else that anyway. you want to address, Helder? We're we're running a little bit short on time. Uh, maybe just uh, would be nice to see. Yeah, I, I don't do many videos, um, but probably I will in the future. Uh, but here are here are the tools in conjunction. Um, Total cost, uh, they're really, they're really, uh, I think they're really well priced for all this. Um, let's see, how do you tell the transaction? Is that the bid or the ask price? Well, is is um, George is what we uh, talked about. So, if if a trade occurs at at the bid, well, we are assuming that's an aggressive sell. Right, uh, and we know because we have the information of what's the best bid and what's the best ask. So we assume that at bid or below that would be a sell or an eat sell, and at ask or above that would be a buy, an aggressive buy. So something that goes on into a time and set. So why do you use? Zero one for imbalance order flow. Well, uh, Richard, because uh, zero point five is the is the middle ground between zero and one, it would mean that at that point is total equilibrium uh, on the bid side. How do I get? <laughs> well, how do I get volume pro? You, you can get the Superdom series. You get you get all the you get all the all the columns. Uh, Jeff, I do not provide live trading. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm very good at it. I'll I'll probably post some videos, create a channel, just as a as a documentation uh, thing. I think there are a lot of uh, good guys already in terms of training. Uh, thank you, Al, as well. Uh, I'd like to see. I think we have time for just one more question, and then yeah, wrap. okay, sure. No, Jared, I think I think it's fine. I think I I've been all through uh, the questions here, um, okay. and thank thanks everybody for 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 being here. And I'm sorry if I took a little bit longer than um, than usual. You know, it's, it's like my wife says, I talk a lot. 
So I'm sorry for that and hopefully uh, everybody enjoyed. And thank you for having me as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to give a special thank you to Helder Leeboy of Quant Spark for a great presentation. Just as a recap, everyone here in attendance will receive an on-demand recording of today's event. Just keep an eye out for that email. It should come to you probably in the next 24 hours or so. An intro ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly vendor events as a value-added service for our clients. If you find value in these events, we hope that you will attend them on a regular basis. Just as a quick reminder, all the information provided today was that of QuantSpark and non traders. Any information was for educational purposes and should not be considered as trading advice. Again, we appreciate the time you spent with us today. Please enjoy the rest of your day. We hope to see you again in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at the Ninja Trade Ecosystem.